Namaste, my friends. My name is Kaustub Desikachar. I am the son of Sri T. K. V. Desikachar and the grandson of Sri T. Krishnamacharya. Recently, I lost my father and I have been wondering what is going to be my role immediately after his passing. One of the things that comes to my heart is to continue to follow his teachings both as a personal practice and as a way to share this with students around the world. I'm also thinking about in what best way I can preserve the legacy of my grandfather and father. There are many things that we can do to do that. One of them is teaching and the other one we thought is to preserve their work so that their legacy continues. And that's why I decided to initiate the project called the Archives Project. Right from the 1930s, my grandfather was collecting a lot of documents creating a lot of documents and preserving them as records of history. My family, starting from my grandfather and my father, have been protecting it or taking care of it in the best ways they could do at these times. In the last years, I have uncovered a very vast number of documents and archives that has not been known to the public at all so far. And I think it is the right moment to share these archives with the people. I have been very privileged that my father left these in my hands and I'm very humbled by his trust. I want to fulfill this trust that he has put in me and I want to therefore not only protect these documents and records in the best possible manner, but also make sure that it is available for students of the future. I share with you some of the archives that we have so that you know the variety of documents and records that have been left behind. To start with, I share with you three files of many which have been documented by my grandfather and my father themselves. These are files that contain enormous records of my grandfather's travels and his <clears throat> work with different people over time. For example, this file that I have right here is documenting his time from 1930 to 35. These include many precious documents, including his first contract of job with the Mysore Maharaja, his first salary, a year later, his increase of salary. So we have many such wonderful documents that Krishnamacharya himself protected and left for others to see. We have documented these in decade-wise manner. For example, here is the next set of documents that is from 1938 to 1942. So <clears throat> many important documents are there as well. His talks in different places, in the Mysore area, in the, in the, in the Chitradurga area, in Hassan area, his travels all over India, everything has been documented. Letters of commemoration have been preserved from very, very dignified people of these times. What is even more interesting is that this continues all the way till the late 70s. <clears throat> Here you have the last file that is 1960s onwards. Now we don't just have these three files, we have 15, 16 files like this, which are so precious because it kind of gives us a very fantastic biographical history of my grandfather. 
things which we didn't know about. For example, in this document from the 1960s, we see a very interesting communication between my grandfather and a guy called Gerald York, uh, who encouraged my grandfather in the 1960s to write a translation of the Hatha Yoga Pradipika. And there has been back and forth correspondence between the two. And these are fascinating to read. So this is one set of documents which are of historical nature. My grandfather also left other kinds of documents which are also very significant. For example, here are some of his manuscripts, his own handwriting of different texts. <clears throat> For example, my father has documented that this is an introduction to his book called Yoga Asanagaru that he wrote in the 1960s. The whole document is in his own handwriting, in very beautiful writing in Telugu script. He has other such documents where he has written articles. <clears throat> For example, here he has written a fantastic article on the topic of Vedanta philosophy. Now you see, his poverty was so that he was using whatever was available. Here is a little diary that was given to him by an English company called Jill and Company. <clears throat> And this was, of course, based in Bombay. So obviously somebody would have given them this diary. They were merchants of <clears throat> cotton and wool and rayon and things like that. So he used that. And you can see from the back of the diary, this is a, di a diary from 1970. So whatever he was getting, he was using to write. Here in this book, he has again written <clears throat> in his own handwriting, commentary on <clears throat> the Bhagavad Gita. Here in this chapter, for example, in this page, he is describing what is called Varna Ashrama Dharma. My father has made notes on the side, Varna Ashrama, what it means, and therefore what Varna Ashrama Dharma means. There's some of his own writing on the topics of Bhagavad Gita as well. <clears throat> Then we have another very valuable document, <clears throat> which is my grandfather's own hand manuscript on the Yoga Rahasya, his own handwriting. I had uh, cataloged this <clears throat> way back and you can see my own handwriting here. You can see that <clears throat> in this every <clears throat> uh, verse of the Yoga Rahasya, which he received, he has written it down. And this is a very priceless document because Yoga Rahasya is one of the lost texts of <clears throat> this teaching tradition. And that he, we have it in his own handwriting, is a great gift. Now, apart from Acharya, Krishna Macharya's own handwriting and documents, we also have TK Desika Charles documents and handwriting from the classes he took from his father, T. Krishna Macharya. For example, we have a small book you can see it's a very old notebook, the papers are coming out and there you can see that this is, he started writing this on the 6th of January 1965. My father was a very young student then. So <clears throat> here he says that this book is the lectures on Yoga Rahasya by Acharya T. Krishnamacharya. But this is my father's handwriting, T. K. V. Desikachar's handwriting, he has documented the whole text and the notes because obviously Acharya Krishnamacharya also dictated this text to my father and gave the meanings of these texts etc. So all this has been documented. For example, here <clears throat> in this page, 87th and 90th verse of the first chapter, you can find the meaning and the commentary are on the <clears throat> left side of the page, the verses on the right side of the page. So they do a very beautiful job here. So this is one document of my father's work. You also have here a very important project, for example, the Yoga Valley of <clears throat> Acharya Krishnamacharya, Acharya Krishnamacharya's commentary on the Yoga Sutra. So there again, <clears throat> there is a, a summary of that that has been presented and my father's handwriting is there. Then all the Sanskrit uh, text of this text has been presented as well which is, a, you can see it's a carbon copy of the original which we have. 
Then my father took pains in translating that into English language and we have his document there as well. We have a very uh, fascinating uh, <clears throat> a documentary of the Yoga Valley again, uh, both in Sanskrit and also my grandfather's own handwriting of the introduction to Yoga Valley, his own presentation of what the Yoga Valley is. So all these are precious documents which I would now like to call it not historical documents only but also technical archives which are very useful information for learning and understanding this tradition. <clears throat> Now this apart, we also have very old documents which are even predating Acharya Krishna Acharya uh, himself. For example, my father gave me this chest. Normally, in this kind of chest, people would keep jewels like necklaces, earrings and all those kind of things. My grandfather preserved other kind of jewels, texts. For example, here we have a small publication of the Yoga Sutra of Patanjali. That's how it was. This was a document that was used by my grandfather's father, you know, and was given to my grandfather. It's a very old document. You can see the entire text of Yoga Sutra is presented. It was published at the very, very beginning of the 1900s. We have here a book that my father has written, TK's father's father, that means my grandfather's grandfather's document <clears throat> and it was basically a, a, a very important document because it's talking a lot about Hayagriva and this is the main deity, presiding deity of our tradition. This document is very old, it's my grandfather's grandfather's document who <clears throat> was the pontiff of the Parakala Mata. So my grandfather, my father has written from TK's father's father, TK's copy before Ranganatha Brahmatantra Parakala Swami. That means this was a copy that was handed eventually over to the pontiff and then the pontiff gave it back to my grandfather for use. This is a very ancient document. You can see the kind of paper that is here. It's not normal paper. These things that I showed you so far are kind of written documents or manuscripts and things like that. But that's not all that we have now. We also have other kind of collections. For example, we have here three sample photo albums that I would like to show you. Now these photo albums are photographs of asanas that have been done by Acharya Krishnamacharya's son, T.K. Srinivasan. This is my uncle, my father's elder brother. Now, <clears throat> this was taken in 1950s in Madras when they moved here. And my uncle, T.K. Srinivasan, was 18 years old. You can see all the classical asanas in these pictures and the photographs are just beautiful. They also need to be protected. We see here, <clears throat> Some photographs that we have filed of Acharya Krishna Acharya himself much later in his life. Some of these were taken by photographers in India, some by photographers outside. You see here some of the original photographs which were part of the Yoga Makaranda in the 1930s. We have an enormous set of photographs, photographs of Acharya Krishna Acharya teaching different students. <clears throat> here, for example, he's teaching the American consul. Here, for example, he's teaching a merchant from Chennai. So, you see here <clears throat> many, many documents like this, many photographs of Acharya Krishna Acharya with his son, T.K. Kachar. Some of these were shot by T.K. Kachar student. We also have very beautiful photographs of T.K. Kachar himself. For example, here are photographs of T.K. Kachar at his marriage. This is in the late 60s. So you see, there are many albums of photographs as well that we would like to preserve and protect. Then there is videos. If you see here, we have three samples here. First one, Acharya Krishnamacharya's 100th birthday video. If you see here, we have Acharya Krishnamacharya's daily practice 
where he was doing at the age of 99. If you see here, we have Acharya Krishnamacharya's asana practice in 1984, just a year after he broke his hips, when everybody had given up hope on him. We also have documents of TKV Desikachar. For example, <clears throat> this document is TKV Desikachar teaching in Israel. It's a very beautiful conference that they did in, I think, 1995 or so. <clears throat> we have here TKV Desikachar answering yoga questions which was uh, done in New Zealand. We have here an audio collection, a whole audio collection uh, in audio cassette format of TK Vidhisgachar teaching in New York. We have here, for example, TK Vidhisgachar teaching in, in Brazil. So we have many important documents which we have to save and protect. The challenge for us is that many of these documents are in different formats. Some of these are in audio cassettes, some of them are in video cassettes, VHS tapes, some of them are in DVDs, some of them are in these kind of formats that I don't even know what they are. So we need to convert all of them into a common platform that is available to everybody, perhaps a digital platform. And this requires some kind of investments. When we look at the documents that we have, paper documents, they're in a very fragile form. We recently consulted the head of <clears throat> Egyptology in Macquarie University in Sydney and asked him advice on how to protect these documents because some of these are almost 100 years old, some of them are more than 100 years old. And he gave us a list of recommendations on how to save it, what kind of paper we should have, what kind of cabinets we should buy, what kind of moisture and humidity we must have in the room where we are having these documents. And all this is our goal. Our goal is eventually that we not only protect these archives, but eventually convert it into a museum so that the legacy of the great masters T. Krishnamacharya and T. K. Vidyasikachar can continue for all of us to benefit. And that's why we are inviting you to help us in this journey. We need your help. We need some funds to protect these documents, protect these archives, so that all these will be available to the people. And therefore, we are organizing a set of ideas so that you can participate in these fundraising projects. One of them, which will happen very soon, is a project there where we are honoring Sir TK Vidyasikachar in Belgium, where we will do a one-day workshop in Liège and one-day workshop in Brussels, so that we honor him and use this event as a fundraiser for protecting these archives. Some of my father's students, who were great artists, have also lent some of their artwork as ways in which we can raise funds for these projects. We will let our public know about these ideas as soon as we receive them and we can catalog them in the right manner. There are many ways you can help. You can participate in some of these projects or you can very simply click on the PayPal link that is presented below and send us a donation. We would be very appreciative of your help in helping us continue the legacy of these grand masters so that the tradition is still alive and everybody can benefit. A very important reason why this project has to be done is because there's so much information that was previously not available to public. Even students of my father who have studied with him for many years did not have access to this information and there is so much to be learned from this and that's why it's, we feel it's our duty to protect them and share them with the public so that knowledge is shared and the light continues to expand. Thank you, my friends. Namaste.